Yo, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. New balling for us, man. It's one we haven't seen before that was sent to us, man. Top three videos with disturbing bad stories, part seven. I don't know why every time. I don't know why my mind went to seven heaven. Huh? The show. Yes, I said why, huh? Because every time I think about like seven, I always think about seven heaven and Did S you Club watch seven. seven. Heaven? No, I watched S Club Seven. I used to. I, I used remember to S Club Seven? That's that's one a lot of y'all don't remember. No, y'all don't. S Club Seven. Yeah, it's something you don't remember. But hey, with I that piece, <laughs> before we get into it. Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want to purchase support, all you got to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, the disrespect. The disrespect. You ain't even got to do all that. Now I already know it's, it's across the street. But, uh, oh, my gosh. What? I'm, what you talking about this? Yeah, I just it's a TV show that used to come on uh, ABC Family. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, boy. But, uh, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Alrighty. Let's get to it. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about, man. Stick around for the crazy real life plot twist at the end of today's top video. Before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all we do. And we upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please flirt with the like button and tell them they are exactly your type and then give them a fake phone number. Oh. Also, please subscribe Damn. to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss... That's the type of song uh, you used to do, huh? No. You ain't never flirt with somebody and said, God, I'm just playing, me. You got my no. cousin double. <laughs> I've never done That's Well, your cousin might did some... You never no. know. No. Somebody in y'all circle has did that, because that's some shallow ass shit. Oh. Give them a fake phone number. Also, please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. In July of 2017, Jerome Kennedy was laying in bed next to his wife and his 10-month-old daughter was sleeping in her crib in the corner of their bedroom. And as he's laying there, he starts to hear what sounds like scuffling sounds above his ceiling. Now, above his ceiling was an attic. It was more like a crawl space because it was incredibly tight and mm -hmm. Jerome and his family didn't keep anything up there. They didn't spend any time up there, in fact. And so Jerome's laying here thinking, man, did an animal get up there? I mean, this is a pretty old apartment building. It's certainly possible that... A squirrel or something could have crawled inside the attic and that's what's making the sound. But eventually that night the sound stopped and Jerome went to sleep. The next day Jerome went up into the crawl space and there was nothing up there. But it's a pretty big space and again it's pretty difficult to maneuver around so he thought you know it is still possible that there could be an animal up here but there wasn't any immediately obvious signs and so he went back down and just hoped it would stop. A couple days go by and he hasn't heard anything in the attic and then one night he wakes up to the sounds in the attic. And when he opens his eyes, there's a vent that sits at the top of the wall right in front of him that's actually over his daughter's crib. And he could have sworn he saw what looked like a flashlight coming from the attic. Yeah, Immediately he gets up and walks over and pulls the vent cover out and he's looking into the attic, but it's not a good view. It's a, it's a curved vent. So at best you're getting a little sliver of a view into the crawl space and he didn't see any more light and he didn't hear anything else. And so once again, he kind of chalks it up, puts the vent cover back in place, gets back in bed and falls asleep. The next morning, he tells his wife about the light he saw in the vent. And now they had already spoken about the strange sounds coming from the attic. And she knew that perhaps there was some animal up there, but the light definitely caught her off guard. But then she remembered that next door, they were doing a whole bunch of renovations on the apartment and perhaps the partition, there was a break in it and they could be doing some late night work and light could have leaked through the break in their partition wall in the attic. And maybe that was causing the flash of light. So Jerome knocks on his neighbor's door and he says, hey, you know, I saw a weird light in my attic and I'm trying to see if there's a break in our partition wall that 
Perhaps if you guys were working late last night, light could have poured through onto our side. You know, is that a possibility? And his neighbor said, you know, we were not working late last night and I've actually been up into our attic and I've checked that partition wall because we're doing renovations and I need to make sure this apartment is in good working order because I'm looking to sell it. And that partition wall is, is solid. So I don't think there's a break in it. Jerome and his wife are totally stumped. And so they decide, let's just put a security camera up in the attic and let's see what's moving around up there. Let's see what's causing the light and these sounds. Hell so no. that day, Jerome goes out, he yeah. gets a little security camera, he comes home. No, I'm saying hell no, because I'm like, this is crazy as hell. Cause, uh, have you ever heard like a squirrel in the attic? Yeah. Um, My mom used to have them. Uh, yeah, we thought something was in our attic. I want... We thought something was in our attic because we used to hear like little, like little footsteps, Man, like little. You know like, when a squirrel up there, and they was just like back and forth, <laughs> back and forth. My mom was like, yeah, my mom was like, it's a squirrel up there. So she called somebody over there to go. They get. Yeah, they didn't find any. They said one nothing up there. No, nah, we didn't have some, but they they come in and out. Yeah. and they got their little access points. So. We had to close it up. He installs it in his attic, and then he, his wife, and his daughter go to bed. That night, Jerome doesn't wake up to any sounds in the ceiling. He doesn't see any lights. And so when he goes to check the footage the next morning, he's not expecting to see anything, but he is shocked at what he discovers. In the middle of the night, after Jerome, his wife, and his young daughter have already fallen asleep, you see on camera as the partition that separates Jerome's attic from his neighbor's attic slides open what? and in crawls who else but Jerome's neighbor, Robert Havrilla, the same guy he was speaking to the day wow. earlier about, hey, have you heard anything in the attic? Well, turned out it was his neighbor. So what? he comes in, he's carrying a drill and a plank of wood and he crawls very quietly over Jerome's side of the apartment and then he pulls aside some insulation that clearly he had already detached before because it slid out of the way very easily. He lays the plank down over some beams and he gets himself positioned over it. <gasps> and then he uses his drill to drill a hole right into Jerome's ceiling and it would happen to be directly above his daughter's crib. He'd put the drill back and then he'd lay there on the plank of wood and stare through the hole at Jerome's that. daughter for 30 minutes without wow. flinching. After he was satisfied, he got up, pulled the plank out of the way, he slid the insulation back in place, he grabbed his grill and the plank of wood, and he crawled his way back into his side wow. and shut the false door. Jerome calls police who come over and they look at the footage and they immediately arrest his neighbor. But then when they go up into the attic to look for themselves, they find there's all these different drill holes that have been carefully covered over because their neighbor had been doing this for some time and had developed a sort of awful routine where he would come in and spy on the family, specifically their infant daughter. Wow. Jerome's neighbor was found guilty of criminal trespassing and was given five years of probation and had to pay Jerome's family $2,245. Here is the very creepy security footage of Jerome's neighbor. That is sick. so disturbing for real that is sick as hell because the reason why it's so sick like the video we just watched earlier with the body cam joint because it's, it is so many messed up people in the world oh yeah <laughs> but it's so so Sorry, many yeah. messed up people in this world and the fact that we know like you're that creepy to the point where you can do even more Possibly, you're gonna do even more, but there's only certain limits we can do to prevent you from, like just just giving him five years of probation. Don't stop him from. This man shouldn't even be a, be able to be near me. I should get a stalking order. He's automatically forced to move, leave the premises. Yeah. Like like he's the one who violated, not me, him. And it's just so. And then the fact that I go over here, sorry, babe. No, you go. The fact that I go over here and I'm like, hey, were, you know, anyone up here working late? No, no. And I know for sure that that's covered and no one was working late. The fact that you lie in my face and the entire time you are the one that is coming over Thanks. here doing stuff. And the fact that you are literally creeping and spying on my, my infant daughter. Like, that's weird. That's Beyond weird, my infant daughter at that. Like what? Like that's 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 one of. Them, uh, like what do you what do you get out of just staring at my for? A he needs to be on the registry. Remember we saw on the registry and it was like the ones who like more of an extreme case. Yeah. He needs to be on that. 
or is he even on the registry? Did we even check that? Because you ain't just now started doing that at, at your big old no. age. No. You did this more than like you. Not your first rodeo. Are you can't be. Nah, nah. Come he's on. a stream, a stream one. I'm looking to sell the place. Please do. And go far, far away. That's Growing up, space. Colton Louder was a joy to be around. He was always goofing off and making people smile, and he had a really infectious laugh. But secretly, he was depressed and began self-medicating at a very young age. By the time he was 18, he was a full-fledged drug addict, and by the Damn. time he was 25, he was in jail on a life sentence for murdering his uncle over a drug-related dispute. Damn. Colton's actions had a profound impact on his family, but none more so than on his twin sister, Kaylin. She had known about his pain, even when he was putting on that facade of being happy and bubbly and outgoing. And she had reached out to him and tried to help him, but she could never get through to him. And when he was ultimately convicted, it was crushing to her. She felt like she couldn't help someone who was really vulnerable. But instead of just feeling bad about this, she took her sadness about her brother and watching him spiral and turned that into a laser focus on helping other vulnerable people that were struggling with addiction and depression to try to help them before they end up like her brother. And eventually she would get her degree in social work from Utah State. But despite Kaylin's best intentions to want to help as many people as she could, she found it very difficult to find work in her field and it wasn't uncommon for her to have fairly long stretches of unemployment. And it was during one of those long stretches in 2014 that Kaylin's life rapidly fell apart and it left everybody who knew her thinking, what just happened? On September 26, 2014, a little after 9 p.m., Kaylin calls 911. She reported that there was this huge, brutal fight taking place in her condo's clubhouse. Basically, it was like a restaurant where you could rent it out in the first floor of this condo complex. And she said it was getting out of hand and police needed to come over here and stop it before someone got hurt. The police asked her if weapons were involved. Were people using weapons in this fight? And Kaylin says, yes guns. But when police rush to the scene, bracing for the worst, they discover that it's just a docile wedding reception happening inside of this clubhouse, and not one person in there reported any altercation happening. Yeah. They were like, we're being pretty quiet. I don't know where she would have got that from. One guest would tell police that they had lit off a single firecracker, but they showed them what they had used, and they were these little tiny cheap things that made almost no noise. So it is possible that Kaylin could have mistaken that for a gunshot, but it does seem highly unlikely. Police leave, and then one hour later, Kaylin calls 911 again, but she immediately hangs up as soon as an operator has actually answered the phone. And the operator calls the number back, and Kaylin picks the phone up, but she's not really speaking. She's mumbling, she sounds confused, and the operator said, you know, hey, you tried to call 911 a minute ago. Is everything okay? Can you tell me where you are? And Kaylin would have a really hard time giving her address to the police. It was like she couldn't remember her address. And she's mumbling, and at some point she says, my roommate thinks I'm delusional and paranoid, but I'm not. Kaylin eventually kind of calmed down and said she was sorry for calling 911, and the operator said okay, and they hung up, and that was the end of the call. The next morning, Kaylin calls 911 for a third time in 24 hours. This time, she's frantic. While she's on the phone with the operator, she's periodically screaming at these two people that are apparently robbing her apartment to get the F out of here, get out of my apartment, you can't be here and the operator is trying to get more information out of Kaylin, but Kaylin is very distressed. She can barely communicate with the operator. She's half crying, and the operator tells her, can you leave? Can you go somewhere safe? And Kaylin says, no, there's only one way out. This is a small apartment. I can't go past them. And the operator tells them that police are on their way. Just stay in your bedroom. Don't go anywhere. And so while Kaylin is huddled in her bedroom and the dispatcher is still on the line listening, you hear Kaylin's roommate, Carol, walk into her bedroom and very calmly say, Kaylin, what's going on? And Kaylin's like, Carol, get over here. You gotta lock the door. Get in here. There's two people in here. They're robbing us. They're out there. They're in the other room. And Carol's like, no. There's no one here. The front door's locked. Kaylin suddenly sounds really confused and she says, well, I, I can't explain that, but they must have been in here because I heard them. They must have had a key and, and that's how they got in and that's how they got out. And right at that moment, the responding officers show up and there was no sign of a break-in. Nothing had been taken. It really looked like nothing had happened unless someone really did have a key. At this point, Kaylin was very embarrassed. She apologized to the officers. She apologized to her roommate. And she ended up calling her mom and saying, I'm 
I'm mortified. I, I can't believe I just called 911 three different times and nothing came of any of these calls. Like, I feel so embarrassed about it. And her mom, being a good mom, told her, you know, don't worry about it. No one got hurt in the process, so it's all good. And so Kaylin moves past it and on the call with her mom, she starts talking about what she's gonna do that day. She says, well, I'm looking to update my resume and submit it to a couple different job openings. And I also wanna clean up my apartment. And so that- Did Kaylin fall somewhere, hit her head? Uh, have she had any, like, I need some, I need some, I need some answers. Uh, cause I'm the type of, I'm thinking of a lot of stuff, right? But I'm like, I don't have, like, there has to be a reason. You get what I'm saying? A reason why any, of any, if she's never shown any signs of this, something had to come about. What you thinking? Do do we know for sure she's never showed any signs? I know it wasn't mentioned, but I'm trying to think because I was thinking Cause her, maybe. Her yeah, I was like trying to think maybe like because he mentioned that her brother. I mean that after her brother's situation yeah. that she took it really hard. So I'm trying to figure out maybe did she have to be like you know get put on some type of medication and or twins, something? Twins, you know, they be having no connections. And they yeah, them be them some weird connections. So like maybe did she get like you know was on some type of medication or maybe she's not taking it or like what well, some something's happening. Like yeah. you know something's going on. But I'm just trying to figure out like exactly what could it possibly what be and why now. So. Okay, the phone and everything seems normal again. But at about 5.45 p.m. that night, Kaylin, along with her beloved little dog named Phyllis that apparently she took everywhere with her, were seen exiting the condo and walking out to the parking lot behind their building. Kaylin was barefoot, was only wearing a tank top and shorts, despite the fact that it was cold and raining. And as soon as she puts her dog down because she was holding her dog in her arm, Kaylin begins having this totally animated discussion, except there's no one there for her to be talking to. About 15 minutes later, she and her dog turn around and walk to back towards before. the condo complex out of view of a camera, but residents would say they saw her crying and going up to a gate that lets you back into the condo, and she apparently couldn't open it, and as she's standing there struggling, she suddenly stops, puts her dog down, turns, and starts running away. And the camera footage we have of her is only when she's back in the parking lot, but she's running away still. And the dog is nowhere to be found. Her oh. beloved dog, she's abandoned. She's got no phone, no wallet, and nobody knows where she's going. Later that night, when Kaylin's family could not get in touch with her, because of all the weirdness around those 911 calls, her family just had a bad feeling about it. And so they filed an official missing person report that night. When police arrived at the condo complex, the first thing they did is they reviewed the security footage. And they already knew about her three 911 calls that had happened within 24 hours, and all of them had been for unfounded reasons. And they see Kaylin on camera, barefoot in a tank top and shorts in the rain, and she's having this animated discussion with nobody before running around and running away. And so police go to Kaylin's family and they say, does your daughter have a drug problem? Is she mentally ill? And her family tells the police, no, she's got no history of mental illness. She definitely does not have a drug addiction because of what happened to her brother. And they explain what happened with Colton and how that had a tremendous impact on her and how that had actually sent her on a course to help people with mental illness or people who are fighting against addiction or depression. And they explained how she was just really well adjusted and everything seemed okay until these 911 calls started and now this. So this huge search is launched between the police and volunteers and actually the Louder family even hired some private investigators to help them look for Kaylin. But days turned into weeks and there was no leads. No one knew where she was. She had just vanished. Then on December 1st, 10 weeks after she went missing, City workers were inspecting drainage pipes down near the Jordan River, which was a river that went by her apartment. Mm. And they discover behind some plants a body that was half submerged and it would turn out to be Kaylin's. Wow. They pull her out of the water and no cause of death could be accurately determined because of how long she had been in the water for. It looked like she had been in there for probably all of the 10 weeks she had been missing. Mm. They were able to determine that there were no drugs in her system and there was no water in her lungs, which meant she didn't drown. Her body was found five miles from where her apartment was, and so initial speculation was she must have gotten hurt and fallen into this river and drifted the five miles downstream to where she was found, 
but they looked at that section of the river between her apartment and where she was found, and the water was simply too shallow and windy, and it would not have been possible for a human body to travel that distance. Which means, almost immediately after she ran off screen on the security footage, she covered those five miles, wound up at that section of the Jordan River, died, and then fell in the water, or fell in the water and then died, but not via drowning. Right. The police officially ruled Kaylin's death an accident, but her family disagrees. They say if you look really closely at the security footage right before she runs away, it looks like she's terrified. More specifically, it looks like she's terrified of someone we can't see on camera. When she's having that animated discussion where it looks like she's talking to no one, further feeding the idea that she had kind of lost it, well, there's this huge rock to the right in the video that kind of obscures our view. And behind that is this huge forest. And it is theoretically possible that someone could be back there that we can't see. But no matter what, her family believes that whatever she was doing in her final moments on camera is the key to understanding why she ran off and ultimately died. So you be the judge. Was this a psychotic break or is there something more? Listen. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Hold on. That car wasn't there, so how long was she I need to, I need the uh you know with a time time yeah, uh, date like step it, so it, I can so, see yeah, how long it took this car to get But yeah, we have seen it before, and I still have no answer. Like I have no like. So I, I, I it, it, there are two possibilities. Two possibilities. The way she's running, I don't think she covered five miles. She ain't running that damn fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I got three scenarios. Three scenarios. Obviously, obviously. One scenario that the police rule is that it was an accident. She actually ran to cover that five miles and she ran in a panic. And obviously something happened. She died. Two, she could have had an episode. Obviously, she's showing signs of someone who's having episodes. Typically, when people are showing signs of episodes or leading up to the episodes, there's traumatic causes in their life that trickle those episodes. So, one, her brother being locked up, you know what I'm saying, for life. Also, her brother killed her uncle, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's another trigger factor. So, now my uncle's dead, my brother's gone for life, my twin brother at that. So, it's a bunch of things that can be triggering. Also, me losing my job. Mm -hmm. So many mind-triggering effects that can make someone go crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain things happen in life that trigger people differently than others. Yeah. So, it could have been a plethora of triggering effects that caused her to start having these weird weird visions and these weird hallucin hallucinations, hallucinations and then making her be delusional and out of it and not being herself. Yeah. So, that could be the case. Could be. And she ran away and then as she ran away, she's come in an encounter with someone else and somebody could have gotten her and did something to her. That is a possibility, but I'm sure if they got her and the body was still intact, we would have saw, even with the water and stuff, we still would have saw some kind of uh, markings on the body if somebody physically harmed her. Mm -hmm. Two, she could have been running from someone, saw someone, all her hallucinations, wasn't hallucination, but things that were happening for real. And... People just made her, it could have been a roommate, not putting out there as a roommate. Uh, could have been anyone, and she could have actually was telling the truth this whole time. Could have been. That's just a, a synopsis. So, those are three options. I don't know which one is what. Seen this video before, still can't even come yeah, up I've with seen it. A yeah, I've seen a video, heard the story. Like, when I was hearing the story, yeah. it was... I didn't remember that I've already heard it, but when yeah. I seen the video, I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen this before. Okay. Still have nothing. Yeah. I have nothing. I still don't. Cause that it's way still... through it, I was like, we heard this before when we used to do the top, like, the top five videos joints. It was, like, way early into our YouTube when, I, when we did And that. the reason why it doesn't, I still have nothing, and nothing really makes sense to me. It's just because it seemed like 
everything just started happening out of nowhere. Yeah. Like within 24 hour span or however, however much. Like it just seemed like things just started happening. And Could she have possibly started taking drugs? And the drugs but, hit her. But they that, said they didn't find anything in her system. You right. So, you right. That is true. So that rules out me thinking that she probably maybe was on some type of medication that you know. Yeah. But she had no Nothing history of mental it. illness. Was she wasn't on any medication as far you know to her family even she wasn't on drugs still nothing was in her system. Obviously alcohol wasn't it like nothing was in her system so it's kind of like she could have over time became schizophrenic. <sighs> I think it's a possibility. I mean, anything is a possibility when you really have nothing. You don't have much to kind of like go off of. Go off of, and nothing really seems to make sense or add up. Or there's no reason why. Like even with us not seeing anyone on a video, who knows? Again, you have this big rock. Whoever, whoever's there, maybe no, there's cameras. So let me make sure I stay out of the clear. Like you just don't know. But then at the same time, if she ran this way. Where the person would have had to, if it Chase was someone, it. so you would have seen them on camera, even if they went back around the other way. Like, I'm pretty sure the camera would have caught something. I have nothing. And it still doesn't make sense to me. Again, I want to know, like, when the car pulled up, did this per- who was this person that was inside that car? Did he overhear her saying so? He or she overhear her? Or, or see anything. Yeah. I just, I don't know. But, yeah, that's that's a unfortunate situation. And how long was she out there? Yeah, especially when the family really has no answers. Nothing really makes sense. Like, you have in your heart that you feel like, you know, something else happened. It wasn't an accident. And it's it's hard to live with. Yeah, and typically people, when when a when family member go through something like that, they tend to automatically rule, have to go with somebody did something to her. We don't want to hear that this is an accident. That's typically how people uh, react when it's a family reason- member. Unless you have... 100% evidence to show that uh, it was it was an accident. If you don't, the family always going to believe something happened to her. And in this situation, honestly, I will also feel like it's not an accident. Because I'm like, no one... Like, if you're not technically, I guess, sick, per se, and you just, like, having these... You don't just, like, go off somewhere and just... She could have she could have developed it that fast though. She has she had a lot of triggering effects that happen. I'm saying and it could have been just go- brain triggering effects. Could have. Where you just die? She- no, no. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm saying where you just where you just go off somewhere and you just like oh okay I'm yeah, expiring yeah. okay but, and that's that. But even if somebody how would somebody be able to kill her and not have no evidence? Because even like my thing is even suff- suffocation. You still leave uh, particles or whatever you. It would have been something like in you and know. So, or she would have inhaled something, so it still would have been right. evidence. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. And then she was in the water, and then she didn't drown. So what other way could she? Hypothermia. I don't think hypothermia would kick in that fast. So still, it's still so much. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. that's why I say you can go either way. It's still yeah. nothing makes sense. I agree. I agree with you. I see where you're coming from. I mean, I see where you're coming from. It's, it, it, it really but now I'm talking something. about the, the death part. Like her dying. There's mm-hmm. no answer. Because we don't really have a true cause of death. Oh, or could it be a heart attack? Nah, nah, nah. They still would have been able to... Rule that, yeah. On June 20th, 2018, 15-year-old Lissandro Gomez Feliz, who went by Junior, was on summer break from school. He and his mother lived in a small apartment in the Bronx, which is in New York City. And this particular this. night, he was staying in, playing video games while his mom was trying to sleep in the other room. Just after 10 p.m., Junior gets a text message from his friend, Jason Velez, who lived about two blocks over. And Jason was asking Junior if he wanted to come over and listen to music with him. Junior was getting bored of his video games anyway, so he says, sure, I'll come meet you. And then at 10.05 p.m., an outside security camera picks Junior up, leaving his house house, walking the two blocks over to his friend Jason. Junior arrives a couple minutes later and he and Jason spend the next hour and a half looking at their phones, listening to music, and just chatting with each other. At about 11.30, Junior says he wants to go and so he says bye to Jason and he starts walking back towards his apartment 
but instead of going to his apartment, he walks past it towards an area known as Adam's Place. Adam's Place was notorious for gang activity, and it was just not a safe place to be unless you were in a gang or it was broad daylight. And since it wasn't broad daylight and Junior was not in a gang, this is a pretty risky move for him. But Junior had a very close friend that lived right near Adam's Place, and this friend of his was not in a gang either, and Junior wanted to hang out with him. And so as he's walking over to Adam's place, he texts this friend and says, hey, I'm gonna be there in a minute. And his friend writes back, don't come here. It's not safe. There's some people outside that are a little bit sketchy. There's some cars in the area that we don't recognize, like stay away from Adam's place. And so Junior gets this text message and he's not about to risk it. So he turns around and starts walking back towards his apartment. But at the same time, Junior's getting this text message, a security camera picks up four cars full of gang members going past Adam's place and turning onto the road that Junior's on, and they start driving up towards him. And as they drive past Junior, they start yelling out at him and taunting him and making fun of him. And Junior, who's scared, just starts running. And right away, the cars start chasing him, and they immediately cut around another side street, and they cut him off. And so he's kind of funneled into this bodega that's on the corner right in front of his apartment. He's literally a stone's throw away from the front door of his apartment, but he can't get to it. So he goes in the bodega and he yells for the store manager to let him over the counter to hide on the other side of the counter. And this store manager who's used to gang violence in this area is not quick to want to help this guy jump over. He's worried he's gonna get robbed. But as he's kind of holding him back from getting on the other side of the counter, the gang members saw Junior go into this bodega and one comes flying into the bodega sees Junior and immediately turns around, runs outside and on security camera, alerts the other gang members that Junior is in here and there's no way for him to get out. There's only one entrance into the bodega. And you see all the cars converge on this bodega and you see all these gang members get out with machetes and knives and they make their way into the bodega where now Junior is behind the counter and you can tell he's terrified. Have you heard more about this story? Like all the details? Yeah. Uh. I was involved in sure. The bodega where now Junior is behind the counter and you can tell he's terrified because he does not know what's going on. He doesn't know why he's being attacked. And you see the gang go right up to the counter and they're screaming at the shop owner to give them Junior. And the shop owner is actually doing a pretty good job of saying, get out. Like, I don't want you in here. Leave him alone. Just get out. But at some point, one of the more aggressive gang members just reaches across and grabs Junior and starts pulling him and they all pile on and start beating on Junior. They beat him to the ground. They pull him painstakingly out of the store. Junior's grasping at everything he can. At one point he grabs onto the ATM machine and you can see fear in his face. He does not want to go outside, but they eventually yank him out into the streets and they proceed to savagely stab and slash him with machetes and knives. After a flurry of attacks, the gang members all run away and get in cars and drive away. And Junior stands up and he's a little bit dazed and he runs back into the bodega and now he's bleeding profusely and he's yelling for help, help me. And everyone's telling him to get out of the store. No one wants to help him. He goes back out onto the road and he's screaming, someone call 911 and no one's listening to him. People are just filming him. And with what little strength he had left, he just starts running towards St. Barnabas Hospital, which was about a block away. And he makes it all the way to the front of the hospital and then collapses and he bleeds to death. The gang responsible for Junior's death was the Trinitarios, which is a Dominican gang that was born out of New York prisons. And over the past couple of years, their violence has skyrocketed. There have been numerous clashes between they and other gang members. Lots of people have been stabbed and attacked just like Junior was. But Junior's death wound up being very unique. After his death, one of the leaders of the Trinitario gang posted to social media that the killing was actually an accident, that this was a case of mistaken identity. Apparently someone had been disrespectful to a gang member's niece, and that night those four cars were out there looking for him, and apparently they expected to find him near Adam's place, and he looked enough like Junior that they decided that's the guy, and Junior was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The gang would apologize to Junior's family on social media. I hate, I hate that term, wrong place at the wrong time. What, I, I, I hate that too. Because I no, I'm in the and right they, place when I'm 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 supposed to be. Y'all just doing something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. When I heard this case, that it really. No, I ain't at the broke wrong. My heart. I ain't at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm. I'm, I'm actually going trying to see my friend, and y'all out here. Yeah, y'all are at the y'all at the wrong, wrong place. Y'all don't supposed to be over here. Yeah. Find something else to do. Facts.
What the hell? And you was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The gang would apologize to Junior's family on social media and said they kicked the killers out of the gang. And the five people that were responsible for killing Junior were ultimately convicted of murder and given life sentences. Here is some of the footage of Junior running into the bodega, trying to save himself before ultimately being dragged out into the street and killed. That's so sad. So sad. Wow. So that's going to do it, guys. Let me know what you thought of these three stories, and I will pin the best comment at the top of the comment section. If you enjoyed today's stories and you haven't done this already, please flirt with the like button and tell them they are exactly your type, but then give them a fake number. Also, please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username on... Really appreciate your support, and until next time, that's going to do it. See ya. Oh, baller, you said stick around for the, like, like man. But, yeah, yeah that, but, uh, that last story, very much I already yeah. know all the details, all the information about it. Every time very I sad. hear it, it, like, messes me up, because I'm just like. It was pointless. The fuck pointless. What's wrong with y'all? Like, 100%, of, like, when I hear, like, gang on gang violence, I'm like, I'm more, like. Not as sensitive to it because I'm like, because that's what y'all chose. That's, to, yeah, y'all you know, chose that life y'all chose. chose. But, but when it's an innocent victim innocent... that has nothing to do with nothing, ain't even from y'all side, identity, don't but... soci associate with none of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then that's, that's kind of that's, that's what messed me up. But it's I like agree. when 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 I hear about people who like, oh yeah, they game bang too, they game bang. They might not did what you did, but they, I'm like, but like, at the end of the day, no matter age or whatever, that's the I'm life like, that's that the life they, they you decided know what comes to with be. That territory. Yeah. A situation and if you don't, like this, you just stay in no, house. No, that's, yeah. yeah. For sure, man, for yeah. sure. But hey, with that being said, man, make sure y'all spread my stuff in the comments, man. Y'all let us know your thoughts and opinions about all of this okay. in the comment section down below. But as always, I do go by the name to get this in. We are. We are. Go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my folks. Dollar, 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 dollar.